What is going on everybody? Welcome back to The Common Coder. My name is Josh and in this video I'm gonna be showing you how to install Git for both Mac and for Windows. So Git is a distributed source control system that's designed for tracking changes across your code files and is used throughout your software development lifecycle. It also allows multiple developers to work on the same project at the same time and is essential for working with hosted solutions like GitHub and Bitbucket, allowing multiple people uh, in an organization or maybe just a group of people working on a software project to work together and collaborate. So let's go ahead and get started and learn how to install Git. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start over on the Mac side of things and head over to git-scm.com. So this is the homepage to download Git. You can see there's some text up here at the top talking about what Git is, some links as well. There's an about section, some documentation, which is going to be very helpful once you start using Git commands, a download page, which will take you to all the various places you can download Git for your machine, and you can get involved in the community with this community tab here. So what we're going to do is click on the downloads, and this will basically take me to a downloads page, giving me links to all of the various downloads for Mac OS. I can also jump to the Windows section and the Linux section as well. So we'll be using the Windows section when we get to the Windows portion of this demo. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click download for Mac. And this is going to give me a few different options to download and install Git on my Mac machine. So by far the easiest and most popular way to do it is using Brew. So if you're not familiar with Brew, it's essentially a package manager for Mac OS. So allows you to install this uh, command on your machine, and then you can download utilities and stuff from Homebrew, and it will automatically do a lot of the necessary configuration and setup for a lot of popular software. So rather than having to run through a GUI, just does everything for you. So what we're going to go ahead and do is install Homebrew. So I'm going to go ahead and click this copy script here, and then all we need to do is just run this in our terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and open my terminal, paste in that command, and hit enter and it's going to ask me for my password for my my user so i'm going to go ahead and put that in now all right and then it's going to have me hit return or enter to continue and this might take a few minutes depending on your machine all right and once that's done what we can do is go ahead and expand our terminal here a little bit and it's asking me to run these two commands in my terminal to add homebrew to my path so what i'm going to go ahead and do is run this one first and then go ahead and copy the second one. So go ahead and paste this one in here. All right. And then it says to run brew help to get started. So if everything worked correctly, I should be able to run brew help. And there we go. So I have homebrew installed on my machine. So now if any software has a homebrew installation, you can use brew inside of your terminal and will automatically install uh, that software for you. So in this case, we're going to use it to download and install Git. Let's go ahead and make this a little bigger and then clear this out. And what we'll do is hit the back button and then to install this, all we have to do is run brew install git. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump back to my terminal and run brew install git. Now, if you run into any issues running that command uh, related to permissions, you will have to run it as a super user. So you need to use the sudo command both in order to install homebrew and to install software with homebrew. All right, so once this is done, looks like everything has been installed and we can check this out and make sure it works by typing git dash dash version. And there we go. It's telling me I have Git version 2.39.3, Apple Git. All right, once you have Git installed, aside from running Git dash dash version, you can also run Git dash dash help. And this will show you all of the various commands and different things that you can do with Git. So we'll actually cover a lot of these in another video, but I just wanna show you here so you can take a look at this after you get installed. And there's a bunch of different usage here. You can start a working area, so you can clone a repository from uh, GitHub or another source control service that uses Git. Once we're working in a repository, we can add, move, restore, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different information in here inside of the command line along with the documentation on the Git website itself. All right, so that's how you install Git on Mac OS. Next, we'll go ahead and look at Windows. All right, so now I'm over here on my Windows machine and I've navigated to git-scm.com. You can see the page looks almost exactly the same, except for in our download area, we now have download for Windows as our button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. On the download page for Windows, you'll notice that this is a little bit different than on the Mac side of things. So typically on Windows, the recommended way of doing almost anything is going through an installer. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is get the installer for our machine. So I'm running a 64-bit version of Windows, so I can go ahead and click the 64-bit Git for Windows setup. 
All right, and once that's done up here, I can go ahead and navigate to that folder. All right, and once we navigate to that folder, we can go ahead and double click our Git installation. It will ask you if I want to allow it to make changes. Yes, I do. Go ahead and accept the agreement. Confirm where you are installing the application. So most Windows things go into a folder called program files. So it's gonna be program files slash git. Go ahead and click next. Now it's gonna have you select all of the various options that you want. What kind of icons do we want an icon for git on the desktop? Sure. Windows Explorer integration. So in our context menus, we'll have an open Git bash and an open Git GUI here. So this is when you right click on a file or a folder, you can go ahead and open and see that uh, inside of the terminal or inside of the Git GUI. If you have that installed, we want to associate Git configuration files with the default text editor, which in our case is Visual Studio Code and associate shell files to be run with bash, which we're gonna see here in just a second. We'll go ahead and click this feature to add a git bash profile to Windows Terminal. So we'll actually see what this does here in just a second. But the way I'd recommend installing git is actually on this next screen. This is where we specify what our start menu folder is going to be. So we're gonna have a folder in our start menu. Click next. Now it's asking what the default editor we want to be used by git. So we don't wanna use vim or any of this other stuff. Like I said, in our case, we're gonna use Visual Studio Code. Go ahead and click next. Adjusting the name of your initial branch for new repositories. So in Git, you have something called a default branch and that default branch would have the name of master. On newer versions of Git, it has the name of main. So it's your main branch, your default branch. Uh, and so we want to go ahead and set that to main. I'm gonna overwrite the default branch name for new repositories. And we'll go ahead and click next here. Now to give you the most options in terms of where you can use Git, I'm gonna recommend using this second option here. In prior versions of this, before Windows had a lot of Linux uh, type support, um, you would definitely wanna use Git Bash as it's installed when you install Git here. And that's still what I'm gonna recommend just because it's nice and easy and it kind of separates out your workflow if you're not doing a lot of command line stuff. But this option is gonna give you the most flexibility. So it's gonna allow you to use Git from git bash, from the default Windows command prompt, or if you like PowerShell, you can use it from PowerShell as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And then it's asking me to choose the SSH executable. So this is important when we connect to GitHub, we'll have to set up an SSH key uh, if we want to avoid having to type in our username and password with every single command that we use. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this use bundled open SSH and we'll go ahead and click next. And then this one's asking which HTTPS transport backend uh, would it like to use for Git connections. We're gonna go ahead and just use the open SSL library. And then this screen's asking you, how do you want to configure the line ending conversion? So between Mac and Windows and Linux, there's different line endings used by the system by default. And so it's asking how we want to handle uh, those types of situations. Now on this one, I'm gonna recommend leaving this top one selected because if you happen to be working on Windows, but you're working with somebody that's working on the project on a Mac, when you start to commit the changes to your code files, the line endings will start to switch back and forth between who's worked on what code. Um, so to avoid having to deal with that, we'll go ahead and leave this top one selected, which basically it's going to have git convert the LF line ending to CRLF when checking out text files. And then when committing the text files, they'll be converted back into LF. So this is going to give you the most uh, flexibility when it comes to collaborating with other people and not having to deal with uh, conflicts because of line endings. So go ahead and click next. So it's asking which terminal emulator we want to use. We'll just use uh, this default here at the top. And then the default behavior of a git pull, it's gonna fast forward the current branch to the fetch branch when possible, otherwise creating a merge commit. So I recommend actually changing this to only ever fast forward because this is the standard behavior of git pull. So git pull will pull down all of the changes once you're connected to a hosted service like GitHub or Bitbucket. And so we want to go ahead and just use the standard behavior here. That way we don't accidentally have any merging going on that we aren't expecting. Then we'll have to manually resolve that kind of stuff ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on only ever fast forward. Go ahead and click next. Go ahead and leave the git credentials manager for this credential helper, click next. Go ahead and leave the defaults here as well. This is gonna enable file system caching. This is just gonna give Git a performance boost in certain situations. So we're gonna go ahead and click next here. And then we're gonna leave the experimental options off. And then finally, we could go ahead and click install. So quite a few settings that we have to configure here. It's one of the nice things about on the Mac side when we saw the homebrew installation, it automatically configures defaults and stuff for you, which speeds up the process. All right, and then once we're done here, we can go ahead and either view the release notes or launch Git Bash. So I'm gonna go ahead and unclick this and click this box here to launch Git Bash. Go ahead and click finish. And then now you can see that we have a Mac type terminal here 
uh, or Linux type terminal that we can type commands into. And what's nice about this is you get to use the same commands, whether you're on Windows or on a Mac. So for example, if I wanted to view uh, the files that are in this directory, I can use the ls command, and this will show me the files in this directory, where if I was using the Windows command prompt, I would have to use the dir command. So this helps kind of keep your command lines consistent across environments, which is nice if you do work across multiple machines or a lot of tutorials and stuff, they're usually done in Linux or Mac using some type of shell like this. So you can choose to use this, but like I said, we set it up for the flexibility of being able to work with multiple command lines. So the git commands will all be the same. So just like we saw on the Mac, we can run git dash dash version and get the version that we're using for Git. We can also run git dash dash help. And this will show me all of the various Git commands uh, that I can use. And you can see this looks identical to what we saw on the Mac side of things. Again, you can look at all of these different things here, kind of read about what they do. Uh, but I would strongly recommend also checking out the Git documentation as it will give you all of the various things that Git can do and you can do quite a bit with it. So we're gonna cover a lot of these Git basics in an upcoming video, but this is how you download and install Git for Windows. All right, well, that's gonna go ahead and conclude this tutorial on how to install Git for Mac and for Windows. As always, thank you so much for coding along with me today. If you like this video and you found the content valuable, please give me a like down below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We're gonna be covering Git in a lot more detail along with other various aspects of web development. So if that's what you're into, I would love to have you along for the journey. So until next time, be sure to stay curious, never stop learning, and I will see you all in the next video.